Hey everybody, welcome back. Happy Wednesday, and it is Dylan or Jigsaw, and we are here with a little bit of a new look. Uh, hopefully it looks a little bit better. I kind of felt like my old backgrounds just... In my old room, it looked a lot better, but with me having my whole setup in one specific room and not having two separate rooms like I used to, uh, obviously it just kind of looked a little cluttered, so I tried to do it at an angle a bit so it looks a little bit cleaner. Hopefully it's good. Let me know what you guys think about that. But this episode is supposed to be intense. From what I've heard all throughout the Star Wars community and like from everybody watching this show, is that this episode, from what everybody is assuming, is supposed to be huge. Like, it's, like I don't know what it is, but a lot of people are, are expecting that because of all the buildup we've gotten, that this episode is supposed to be the big one. Um, it's 45 minutes long, not too long, uh, but a lot longer than what we've been getting recently because they've been like 30, 35 minutes long lately. Um, which I'm not complaining about that. I know a lot of people don't like that. A lot of people have said the story kind of doesn't have a direction yet, which I, I can see where they're coming from, but I think it was established pretty early on that they were just trying to set together all the Mandalorians to get them to get their shit together and, you know, take back what was theirs. And I, I picked up on that pretty quick, at least from the second episode. So... I don't know. For the full uncut reaction, make sure to go to the link down below in the description as well as the pinned comments for the Patreon. There you get early access, full length reactions, polls, content requests, and a bunch of other extra content that I'm going to be adding on there as well. Don't have to, but that is where you'll get the full length reaction. You can sync up your copy of the episode with mine and we can watch the reaction together. Man, I can be up on one monitor, you have the episode up on the other. And we'll be hanging out just kind of like buddies. Make sure to leave a like down below, hit that subscribe button, and let's get into chapter 22 of The Mandalorian. Ah, who are we opening up on here? Wow, we've never seen a lot about this species, I don't think. That is so cool. That's Moff Gideon's ship, isn't it? I meant to say that we were not aware of the majestic Imperial presence in this sector, and we will gladly hire your protection. We are not Imperial, either. Oh, whoa! I think we found who took Moff Gideon. 100%. Captain, please. Talk to him. You have to go with them. No, I love you. Please go. Oh. I'll see you again. It's a long ride home. I thought Mandalorians were honorable. We are, kid. All it takes is a few credits. Oh. That's going to ruin so many perceptions of them. Mm. That was hot. That was a nice beat. Okay, there's one of our trailer shots. That means we're almost out of them. It's probably best if we go in on foot. Welcome to Plasia 15, the outer room's <laughs> only remaining direct democracy. I thought she was getting a phone call for some reason. <laughs> Beautiful looking city though, I'll give them that. That R2 droid looks so sweet. Welcome to Plasma. Or R2, the astromech droid. I love how, like, the Empire is kind of just, like, kind of what the military does. But they'll take what cool things that the everyday people have and then just, like, paint it tan. <laughs> now it's military. Do you grant permission to scan your chain code? Oh. Din Djarin and Bo-Katan Kreese. Please do not attempt to leave the vehicle. This is not a request.
He's like, great, what'd you just get us into, go? Join us! Come! It's a party! <laughs> Come! <laughs> Hello, <Mr. laughs> I hope you like <laughs> Jack Come, Black! Oh my god! Do you love me? <laughs> That's the one thing I never knew I needed. You were Imperial? He was. Plazio suffered greatly under Imperial rule. Hello, Lizzo. <gasps> oh! You're so fast. We'll just be a moment. Enjoy your meal, don't get up. Let's show our guests the view. Okay, come on, Jack. What you got here? You have a problem. Yes. A droid problem. What kind oh. of droid problem? Malfunction. A coordinated malfunction. We think. I mean, nothing too serious at first. Unexpected power cycles, deleted task stacks. And then it got worse. Traffic accidents, uh, heavy equipment failures leading to injury. Assault. Assault? Whoa. Our constables are ill-equipped to confront battle droids. Battle droids? <laughs> Former battle droids. They've been rehabilitated for civic duty. We thought. They were. Obviously not. The Mandalorian garrison outside your city walls can make quick... Are we fighting B1 battle droids in this freaking episode? The people have voted we are a pluralistic society. You are Mandalorians. Weaponry and armor are intrinsic to your culture, are they not? They are. <laughs> you see where we're going here? You want us to eliminate your droid problem? Exactly. I mean, they're also being, you know, you open to all religions, so that's pretty cool. You know, <laughs> good for them. They're like, hey, we ain't discriminating. You got the excuse to have your weapons. I am not a mercenary. Apologies if that is the impression I gave. What I intended to convey is that I would hope that this. <laughs> He's just having the time of his life. In fact. Plazier 15 would formally recognize Mandalore as a sovereign system and petition the New Republic to recognize it as such. The mercenary. That's a good deal. What do you think? You had me at battle droids. <laughs> These droids <laughs> he hates battle droids. <gasps> I saw a super battle droid. I saw. A captured Imperial robots. Is that. Scraps at oh my god. They just gave everybody a part in the series this season. This is just a small collection of malfunctions. That oh, oh, oh. Cameras caught. Ooh. There's a fail-safe cutoff switch built into the system. However... What? The citizens voted against any interruption in droid services. They can't live without it. And why is that? The citizens are no longer required to work. They can spend their days engaging in recreation, the arts, and participating in our direct democracy. That's crazy to think that they could even get to that point. Look at all the Ugnaughts. I only see one, but I bet you there's going to be a lot of them. Ah, look at them all! Look at them! I am bo Creek. Look at them, look at them! We were sent on behalf of the Duchess and Captain Bombardier to help you with your droid problem. Do they speak a different language? I am Mandalorian Din Djarin, friend of Ugnat Quill. You will answer our questions and help us with our task. I have spoken. Quill. <laughs> oh you no, this episode. You may not have heard the news down here, but your droids are wreaking havoc in the world above. There is not much of which we are not aware. These halls are the central nervous system of the city. The stories of Ugnaught's skill with smithing droids are legendary. We know that Ugnaughts are considered the hardest working species in the galaxy. We like you, have been engaged with a task to perform. We will investigate the dangerous incidents. We would appreciate your help. I love that like his former run-ins with different species has helped him grow so much and taught him how to communicate with 
said species. It's amazing. There's a likelihood that the next event will be at the loading docks. How sure are they? Hard to tell. Hognuts always seem sure of themselves. How can they know when the next event's gonna happen unless they, like, planned it? I haven't seen battle droids since the Clone Wars. We haven't seen battle droids since the Clone Wars. <laughs> Like, Attack of the Clones was the last time we had live-action droids. You are to vacate immediately. We have a few questions. And it's the voices from Clone Wars, too! I saw the reports. Rest assured, I've had the entire line of loaders undergo maintenance protocols. They were... Yeah, uh, what are you doing? Then this shouldn't fail. <laughs> uh, sir? Excuse me? Okay, excuse me, sir? <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, God. You should have left them alone. <laughs> I love hearing their voices. That's awesome. Oh, boy. I'm trying to watch what's happening and look for Easter eggs at the same time. <laughs> Good God. Good God. Nice shot. This is a crime scene. Thank you for standing back. Dude, we need stuff like that. That's cool. I found a spark pad. What's it say? The resistor. Sounds like a droid bar. Did we just get like, we're watching like a police investigation episode. This is, I'm enjoying this season. I don't care what anybody says. This is cool. Everybody's like drinking oil. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Oh, it's like a callback to episode four. Your kind's not welcome here. <laughs> that spark pad was found on a rogue battle droid. We give out lots of spark pads. What are you getting at? There has been a string of malfunctions that all point to this oil can. You can. Uh, I love this, dude. I love it just seeing like the perspective from droids, you know? Just because the malfunctioning droids happen to visit here doesn't mean that this one is in on it. I love these two together. They're great. Some droids on Plazia date back to the Separatists. The New Republic would send them to scrap. But here wow. on Plazia, they are given a second chance. Well, these catastrophes don't help your argument. Exactly. That's why we need your help. We don't want to be replaced. We still have a lot to contribute. That's such a cool robot, dude. It's, I think it's practical, too. It's the least we can do. Hey, let's go. This episode is so cool. That is not how it works here. There is no selection of beverages as with organics. Here, droids are served Nepenthe. What's Nepenthe? It is a viscous lubricant that protects against mechanical wear while delivering program refreshing subparticles. Dude, this is so cool. I'm nerding out right now. These are the remains of the latest malfunctioning. They're pulling them out like it's a body in a morgue. Oh my God. All right, let's see if they give us a reading. She looks familiar too, but it's not ringing a bell. God. Did that droid get like infected really quickly from just from taking its sample? Probably malleability limitations at this scale. No. It's writing. 
Rotate the perspective. It's a chain code. If it has a chain code, then we should be able to determine its point of origin. In theory. Dude, this is awesome. Out. I know I'm just yes, saying the same thing, but this is so cool. They were originally manufactured by the Techno Union, been right. in cold storage for ages. The chain title says it didn't arrive on Plazir through droid acquisitions. How strange. How did it arrive? They were requisitioned by the security office. Is that unusual? It's illegal. There's no record of this transaction on the government register. Oh. These droids were ordered by an individual. Is there a name? Someone's slipping their own droids. Security. <gasps> Commissioner Hellgate. No! Oh. Check the cycles of security cameras for any potential irregularities. Doc is screwed. <laughs> Commissioner, we have some questions for you. Sorry, I have to check the data farm for anomalies. We know about the Nepenthe and the nano droids. They didn't malfunction. You programmed them to disrupt an attack. You're coming with us. Everyone freeze! If I trigger this failsafe, it will convert the planet's docile workforce back into battle droids and unleash them upon the unsuspecting citizens of the Oh, God. There's no way out, Commissioner. Give yourself up. Give up? I never give up. I didn't give up to the corrupt Republic. I didn't give up to the Empire. And I won't give up to you. This guy has been alive for a long time. I support democracy. Count Dooku was a visionary. He was cut short in his prime wow. by the Jedi forces. Count Dooku supporter. Oh my gosh. <laughs> He's just been here chilling the whole time. We found the cause of your malfunctions. Is this true? I'm afraid it is, my lady. Despicable. If that isn't the quarter calling the stiffling slimy. <laughs> oh, jeez. Lady Bo-Katan Kreese and Din Djarin of Concordia, I grant you audience with our deployment of Mandalorian privateers. I also give to you both our highest honor, the key to Plazier. They got like a key to the city for during a little investigation. This is like a little old cop, cop TV show, you know? And to this little one, I grant knighthood. Oh, wow. You are now a knight of the ancient order of independent regencies. <laughs> this is so cool. Jedi, Mandalorian, and a knight. What a fleet, man. Like, look at this, dude. We could use that so much. Have you come back to join the mercenaries? I've come to reclaim my fleet. I'm now in command and grown quite fond of it. Oh, gosh. Be his ass. Then I challenge you. One warrior to another. Take it back, Bo. Let's go. Take your spot back. Do you? This episode keeps giving and giving. Yield. You may have to kill him. 
I don't know if he's gonna yield unless you absolutely knock his ass out. Enough Mandalorian blood has been spilled by your own hands. Just yield, man. But a misguided zealot possesses the blade. One, I might add, who has not one drop of Mandalorian blood in his veins. He is every bit the Mandalorian that they were. Certainly as much as any of us. At least more Mandalorian than an axe at this point. Then she shall have it. While exploring Mandalore, I was captured, and this blade was taken from me. Bo-Katan rescued me and slayed my captor. Right, right. <laughs> defeated the enemy that defeated me. Oh, let's go. Would this blade then not belong to her? Would it not belong to her? It's the music, man. It's making me tear up. It would. <laughs> Bryce Dallas Howard, you fucking goddess, bro. Oh my god. Oh. Oh, that, I keep saying this, it's like each episode I say it's like my favorite episode so far, but that was, oh my god. I don't know if it was all the battle droids and then them having the same voice actor as they did in, in like the Clone Wars animated series, which just was a, a kiss on top of everything, because in, in the original Clone Wars, obviously they didn't sound like that, and I, no one really knew if they were going to keep it that way or what was going to happen, but they, they brought it back, and it just sounded so perfect. I, it, it, it was amazing, man. And, oh, God, seeing Jack freaking black in Star Wars is like a gift from God. I, I've, I've listened to so much of his music from Tenacious D. I've seen all of his movies. I started out watching School of Rock when I was younger. Um, and I've watched every movie before that. Like, he was, he, he, oh, God, dude, Jack Black is amazing. And he's not in a lot. Like, he's been in a lot kind of recently. The past couple, like, five years, maybe. A couple five years, I don't know if those make sense. But, like, the past five years, maybe-ish, he's been in, like, the Jumanji films. But, like, he was in, um... Oh god, what was that movie where he got like sniped by by somebody and he just got destroyed? I can't remember what it was. He was in like one or two kind of small films before School of Rock. School of Rock blew up. After School of Rock, he got King Kong. And then after that, he really wasn't doing much movie-wise. Or at least like, like nothing crazy. I know he did The Pick of Destiny in 2006. But other than that, it really wasn't... It wasn't a lot. Like, he wasn't like, you know, doing... Like what The Rock did, and he was in every goddamn movie you saw. So it, it, it's just seeing him, one of my favorite actors, and my all-time favorite series is just, like, amazing. Star Wars has been something I grew up with. Jack Black is someone I grew up with. Like, it, it's the equivalent of seeing, like, Robin Williams in this, man. It's just, like, I have so much love for Jack Black, and it was so cool seeing him do that and be in that role. And you know he had fun with it. That's the main reason. You know he doesn't do stuff unless he enjoys it. And he... Oh, I loved it so much. It was so over the top. I loved it. Seeing all the Ugnaughts and having a little bit of a reminder of Queel uh, from Season 1 was just perfect. You know, like, we... Queel was someone we did not get enough time with. And we, we, we did the, the one death we just weren't expecting and we kind of hope just didn't happen. But it was essential towards the story and it, it, it was crazy and it was awesome at the same time. And Nick Nolte did a great job playing him. Well, not playing him, playing him, but voicing him. And Quill is one of my all-time favorite Star Wars characters just because of how great he was portrayed. And again, seeing, seeing Bo go over there to Axe and and fight him, and then having Mando come in and be like, well, she defeated someone that defeated me, like an enemy that took my, or defeated me in combat, and she defeated him in my honor. Like, 
she deserves this by by right like that's how it works and they were like yeah we're in so it's just like i don't know if axe 100 percent in though you know he still may not be 100 percent in but we will see oh my god that was the most intense most exhilarating exciting episode i think i've watched this season it was so good and i it makes me wonder what because that wasn't even what i was expecting when i said everybody was expecting a lot from this episode people were expecting like to see moff gideon to see to see thrawn for some reason as well and that was cool so that means we even have any even more cool stuff coming that's even cooler than what we just got because half the trailer like more than half of the trailer shots are gone we got a couple of them in this freaking episode, and that's it. I think those were the, the couple of trailer shots that we hadn't seen yet. After that, we got two or three episodes left, I think. So that's two or three hours worth of footage that we have not seen any clips of. Remember, for the full uncut reaction, you can go to the link down below in the description, as well as the pinned comments down below, and you can go to the Patreon, get the full unedited reaction, sync your copy up with mine, and we can watch it together like best buds, and it'll be a great time. Chapter 22, I think, will go down in the books as one of the best episodes of The Mandalorian. Great, great episode. Bryce Dallas Howard killed it, per usual. She's, she's amazing. I think she's really... I'm not, I, I hate saying underrated, because I feel like it's overused and, like, not used correctly anymore. But, like, in a way, she's just... No one really realizes how great of a director she is, except kind of us in Star Wars, because she's, she's, she's only directed, I think, a lot of Star Wars stuff, really. So again, absolutely love this episode. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like down below. Hit that subscribe button and turn on your post notifications so you can see whenever I upload videos. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Adios.